So this weekend, the Dublin District Schools Boys League are going to host the inaugural DDSL Lifestyle Sports Friendship Cup. It's taking place out at the FAI headquarters at Abbottstown from Friday through to Sunday. The DDSL celebrating their 75th anniversary this year. It's the biggest schoolboy league in Europe, has given the Irish soccer team all sorts of stars throughout the years. And this weekend, they are bringing a stellar lineup of the world's biggest clubs, including Liverpool, Manchester United, Chelsea, Bayern Munich and Ajax, to complete against the DDSL league team over three days of under-13 action. I'm delighted to be joined in studio by Mick Kennedy, who is Vice Chairman of the DDSL, and also Kieran Masterson, who is involved in the organising committee, and right now, better known as Connor's dad. Correct, 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 correct. <laughs> when, when does that moment That's happen? a nice smile there when you say that as well, yeah. I think for the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah it, it's, a, it's a nice thing to be known as now, with the way the last couple of months have gone from. Oh, without doubt. Uh, he's certainly living, uh, let me say, an ambition that he's had and the experiences that he's going through at the moment are, are a pleasure for us all to see. It's been a long, long, long journey. Uh, but I suppose it, it does. his journey is probably something that we, we understand because he has come through the DDSL, he was in the Kennedy Cup team and he has represented his country and representing the, the, the league uh, from where he comes from. And today, all that experience that he got in the league is manifesting himself in a, in a very, well, I think, an opportune time where he has a chance to, to maybe mm. fulfil his own dream and become a, a Liverpool footballer. When did you realise that he was a little bit different to all the other boys out playing football? I suppose, in fairness to, to Connor, uh, it would probably be very early on, seven, eight, nine years of age, he, he showed reasonable promise. But again, that promise was only developed because of the competition that we had. Uh, we, Connor was very lucky to play for Luke United and very lucky to play in the Dublin District School by League. He had great competition every week and uh, anybody who knows Connor's development and experiences would say that he was forged in the league. So I, I, I would see Connor as, uh, let me say again, as a product of what we're trying to, trying to do today. We're trying to improve the league. We're trying to create a situation where we can grow more players. And I think that's fundamentally uh, he is an example of where we got it right as a league. But there's lots more other boys before him and there's lots more going to come after him. I think you're saying that that's, that's something that rings very true. It's, it's his peers almost, isn't it? It's the, the, it's the peers is. around you that drive your own standards from such a young age mm. that get you to the levels that, that, that we're seeing, obviously, Connor now and many others, as you said before, yeah. and hopefully many more to come. It's, it's, it's the standard of the league itself. Have I, to be brutally honest, uh, the 98 age group, right, we were very fortunate. There were some excellent players. Competition was immense. When you when you eventually got onto the say the, the representative side of the DDSL, we were very fortunate to have excellent coaches. Connor was exposed to that development, and when when the trial or the scouting world came to came to call, he was ready, and uh, he was in a better position because he uh, he had that experience uh, of that high level of competition. And uh, I, I sit here and I think back of all the good players and the good managers and who have been hugely contributing to Connor's development. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. So without them, we, we, we well, wouldn't... Fanta it's fantastic to see Connor coming through because the players that are there within the DDSL squads will look up to, Con mm. to Connor and see how he's progressed within Liverpool. So it does give them a huge incentive as well. Yeah, how, how, again, you know, I, I think we, we... Of course, we're here now to talk around the DDSL in general, but... It's it's okay then, yeah, you get the he gets to his level now, he's at Connor, mm. but he's still now got to make Jeez. he's probably got to make an even bigger step now in many respects. He's 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 almost he's almost walked to the other end of the earth to get where he is now. Now all of a sudden he's got to get to that next level. You can't underestimate what actually it takes now for him to achieve, as you say, what he wants to do and go and establish himself at Liverpool. Without doubt, I suppose the private conversations we would have, he he would acknowledge that yeah, he's close but so far away. Mm. Uh, and like last night he had a fantastic opportunity, fantastic experience as a yeah. fan, he's a Liverpool fan mm. and being in Rome and being around the team but he would say when he went training to Lay and Lalana made a holy show of him he said he realises how far the gap is between uh, sitting and very close to the bench and being on the bench but it's a different world to try and make sure you get into that squad and get that team, you know? You must I be incredibly proud of how he's handled it, though, because we've spoken to him here on the show, Tony O'Donoghue who interviewed him on RTE the night after the game against Manchester City, and, and he comes across so well, very, very level-headed. 
Uh, well, I genuinely would say he gets it all from his mother. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, but I, I genuinely say uh, the development in this country, people a lot knock a lot of what mm. goes on. But Connor was exposed to all these things, whether when he was working in the different, with, with the good coaches in the DDSL League, moving on to the Kennedy Cup. But dealing with uh, Niall Harrison, Tom O'Connor, all of these experienced international managers, they, they gave Connor a huge opportunity and huge insight how things were done. Mm. So when he went to go on trial and when he went to, to, to get to an environment where he is now, now, he has some experience of how we should handle himself and who he's representing. Mm. How does the DDSL define success for young players? Is it in terms of sheer numbers playing football, underage football in Dublin, or is it in terms of no, the Conor open. Mastersons and the amount of guys who end up playing for Ireland? There's, there's, a bit, there, there's both. Effectively, we have an excess of 20,000 players and, we, and we're continuing to grow. We've over uh, 1,600 teams. As far as we're concerned, every kid is important. Now, kids develop at different stages. We've changed a huge setup between from the, the age of 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, which is now non-trophy and we're working very closely with the FEI. Not only are we working closely with the FEI, but all the other leagues around the country are, are doing so as well and it takes time to develop that system and that system coming through obviously we want to see players that are of the same calibre as Conor Connor and coming through that system but uh, it's open to all the players but certainly with the new structure that is in there with the development plan with the FEI I have no doubt in my own, uh, from looking at our own league is that in time we are going to see some fantastic players coming out and that comes back to the from the age of seven and I can talk about that's, that That's the coaching the coach and the management that you've got in the, the structure from such a young age then, yeah. The big difference is is, is where you take eights and nines, they're now playing a new format system, 5v5. I, I won't go into the, the, the full details, but effectively the, the, the goalkeepers can kick it out of their hands. There's a retreat line, so what tends to happen is the goalkeeper must roll it to the defender, yeah. but the defender now has time on the ball because the forward has to stay until such time as the defender gets the, uh, until the defender gets the ball. So now what I can see, and this has been going on for four years, if you go out to see some of these kids who start at 7 and 8 and who are now 11 and 12 you can see that they're not panicking they're passing the ball up the field they're not booting it all the way up and, ho- and it, it's coming back although that did work for Jack Charles yeah. now, so, so we, we can't knock that but at the end of the day the skill set and more importantly with that system is that the players are comfortable on so the ball you were saying, yeah, So you're saying this so rather than the old theory was the, the survival of the fittest in many right. ways who could kick the ball the furthest yes. who could um, shoot from the furthest from the furthest That's distance right. as well. Rather than that, now we're actually getting a structure in place where we're actually encouraging we're our encouraging. defenders to take the ball from the goalkeepers who are actually encouraged to take the ball as exactly. well, pass it into midfield. But so where where is this? System come from then because this you said, it's very much out of out of kilter than what we would have maybe this 20, 30 years ago been in keeping. Well, I tell you where it started from. It, initially, it started five years ago. Uh, the committee in the DDSL got together and brought in about fourteen coaches, as, uh, not secretaries, coaches, people on the ground from all the different clubs. We asked them at a meeting, said, "Look, come in and let's see what structure we can come in place." We also had four people from the FEI, Jerry Reardon, and a number of other coaches, mm. and we sat down for about four to five months and we said look will this system work and then we worked very closely with the FEI we were the first ones with the FEI to bring this together right and because and the, the, the beauty of the system is that uh, for the first six months we, we tried it we let it see how it went and then what we did is that we brought all the coaches into a meeting from uh, every team about 250 coaches and we turned around and said right what are we doing right and what are we doing wrong and what we did is we he- we got their feedback this didn't come from the DDSL or from the SFEI the FF- this came from from the people on the ground and that's the key so so the culture then uh, sorry Nathan, you said so the culture that, that we've gone away from is rather than actually produce winning football we're producing technically gifted football for the first number of years yes. so what we're trying to do is that instead of little Jimmy going out at under 8 to 9 and his father and his mother and his granny and his manager screaming to get win that cup at under 8 yeah. we're now trying to make the kids comfortable on the ball we're trying to make them relaxed and we're also trying to give them confidence which is more important mm. Is there, is that a risk? Robbie Keane didn't grow up in that environment. He was getting kicked around the streets when he was eight or nine, and it didn't do him any harm. No, but at the end, time will tell. But I, I, from what I can see, definitely. Look, it, it's going to take in a, a number of years for this to see the, the full fruition. But when you come in, the, you come out and see some of the eleven A's. I play right. I'm not just talking about Dublin. I'm talking about around the country. Mm. Some of the standard is absolutely fantastic, and that will take time. There's no question about that. What then about the changes with the League of Ireland to and the FAI to 13s, 15s, 17s and moving in with the League of Ireland clubs? 
Have you started to notice any real effect from that? And how do you think it's going to affect the general participation? Because the, the worry would be that if you don't make a team at under 13 and certainly at under 15, then you'll kind of think, well, I'm never going to make it and I'll just give up. Yeah, well, the big difficulty with that is it, it's in its infancy. It's only starting off now, so uh, the jury is out as whether it will be a success. The, the the difficulty is that if you go down to under thirteens and you're talking about bringing kids eleven and twelve, and they're travelling up to Finn Harps and down to Cork, and and there's such a big difference, it has to be well managed. There's a, there's a huge admin mm. cost mm. behind that as well, and I'm I'm not fully convinced of that. Let let's just see how 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 it, how it plays out. Yeah, because Sean Ryan had the article in the Sunday Independent last weekend about giving the example maybe of Bell who are one of the most famed yes. clubs and who so many Irish internationals have come through whereby they don't have their own facilities, they rent facilities That's and the vast majority of that money comes <coughs> from young players going to England and the fees, minuscule as they are, that they're getting but they sustain the club and they can rent decent facilities. If that's taken away from them, that's well, a somebody's going to suffer. Absolutely, you're spot on. That's a huge risk because at the end of the day, you mentioned Belvedere, there's teams Home Farm, Kevins, who have produced absolutely mm. fantastic players, um, the Lean Bradys and so forth, and they did it from a system. I mean, I, I, the, the, the system can work with the clubs um, in, in, in right around the country in conjunction with the FBI, but the problem is how how young do you go mm. that's an, an mm. issue for us I'd say and certainly the other thing as well is that if you have kids going into under 13 under 15 or whatever and they don't make it in the, in that, in the League of Ireland the danger is will they come back into the, the fold will they be embarrassed it happens if you see players coming back in from, yeah, yeah. from the Premier and so forth they don't tend in the past anyway mm -hmm. they didn't come back yeah. to the League of Ireland or, 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 and some of them actually gave up football completely and I'm concerned that that could certainly be the case where if somebody goes to a league of and they don't make that and they come back to the local DDSL or, or whatever mm. club it is in the country, will they actually come back or will they give up football and go to play another sport? Are, are you trying to promote then that within the structure now that at young age, look, if you don't quite make it, if Absolutely. you, or even if you do make it, then look, we are here, we are your safety net in many ways. But the clubs, have, the, the clubs that you've mentioned, they've been doing this for many, mm. many years. You know, Home Farm and Stella are, are, are the founder, where were the founder teams in, in our 75th anniversary. So they've brought players, Johnny Giles and all these players through. So you don't necessarily have to change. No, you know? no. And I, <coughs> you know more about it, Karen, well, I'm watching, the, the, I, I see it closely, and I could say to you, look, uh, what Damien Duff is doing with the under-15s up in Shamrock Rovers is tremendous. I've, because of my background, I'm seeing those kids come from different clubs and developing, but the ethos up there in relation to semi-full-time training, you can see the benefits. Mm -hmm. And that sets standards and it sets challenges for other clubs to catch up and uh, reach and aspire to maintaining those standards and, and even peaking as time goes on. The issue for us and the issue that we all have to consider is, if Belvedere isn't there, who's going to look after the kid at 7, 8, 9 and 10? Yeah. Uh, if uh, Cherry Orchard aren't there, who's going to look after the kids in that locality going forward? And that's the balance we, we have to consider. Uh, uh, we understand, uh, as, as a nation, we should develop our National League. Mm -hmm. And you can see where this is geared towards supporting a throughput of players to develop the standard in the National League. Uh, some may say it's a revenue stream for the National League. That's an opinion. But I think what we will see over a period of time is that we will have to ensure that the grassroots is supported. And without that support, we will... Yeah, and kill the goose, the lazy yeah. and the thing is, just, in, just in relation, then you go, it comes back to Connor then, because... Mm. Again, 20, 30 years ago, mm. we may have seen five or six Connor Masters Correct. going over. We may have seen 10, 15 lads going yeah. over, going to Leeds, going to Man United, yeah. Liverpool, whoever it would have been. Mm. Now, all of a sudden, we're actually... It's, and I don't necessarily see it as our standards have fallen. No. It's just the, the net has gone so much wider now. So that, this is a problem that we're, in, we're encountering at senior Absolutely. international level right through. So I suppose the obligation is, as you say, that we are getting our lads, perhaps maybe League of Ireland standard, yeah. then all of a sudden they're getting the, that development side as well. So that we have, it, it's, it's, it's about, as you say, maybe I suppose working together, that's got to be the key thing, I suppose, through it all. And I think what we, what's good about the DDSA League, and I think it's important, we would have 20,000 people playing, but tiny numbers who, who will go on to, to, yeah. to, 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 to aspire to be a professional footballer. And I think what people have to understand is the community involvement, the community development, and the personal development that the league provides for all of these kids is a must, and that's as important as developing yeah. the Connors and the next Connors. But there is a challenge between the pathway that's been created for 13s, 15s, 17s, and 19s in the National League, and vis-a-vis -vis what we had before. How are we going to fund the grassroots of football? How will the Belvedere's, when they're not there, who is going to look after the smaller young academies? Who's going to do that? And that's the challenge.
Yeah, and that's not just a elite football challenge. That's a community, a community young yeah. children inner city areas in Dublin and the good work they're doing there. It's a far greater conversation that I think we'll have to come back to again at some stage. But I do want to talk about what's happening this weekend. So we've Liverpool, Manchester United, Chelsea, Bayern Munich, Ajax coming over to take on a DDSL league team over three days of under-13 action. Give us the details then. Where's it all happening? It's all happening in Abbottstown. We've, uh, it's, it's beginning at 6 o'clock on, on Friday the 4th, which is um, we'll have all the teams available. And um, in Ferris County, he's organised the Garda Band. So we, we have, we'll we have the opening ceremony and the first uh, fixture will take place at 7 o'clock on the Friday. So there's fixtures uh, Friday evening, Saturday morning, and uh, two sets of fixtures on Saturday morning and then one later, two what later on the, the day. Fixture Saturday morning as well then? What time they start? 10 o'clock, yeah. Clock, yeah, right. And eleven forty five. Um and then obviously we'll have the, the, the playoffs on the Sunday and the final at twelve o'clock. Yeah, so tickets five or per person or fifteen year old get you in for the weekend. There's parking available out in Abbottstown. If you're going you need to make the point, you've got to use the M fifty or the N three, which are the main routes in to Abbottstown at times on a Saturday, people are going shopping in Blanchardstown and all that. Uh, give yourself a little bit of time. Like it promises to be a cracking weekend. Getting Bayern Munich, Ajax over as well as Liverpool, Chelsea, it's a it's a good learning experience for everybody, coaches, players, yeah, anybody, absolutely. to see where we are. See, because it's our 75th, you know, there's so many volunteers involved and there's so many people in the background. We said, look, how, how do we, we, we support, you know, our 75th? What events mm. do we have? And one of the, the idea for this actually came from our chairman, Paddy Dempsey. And Paddy asked Kieran to come in and uh, have a, set up a, sm- a small subcommittee. And that's been taking place since oh, October. Yeah. And in fairness to the lads, to get those names, you know, is fantastic. You know, and that's down to uh, uh, Paddy Dempsey and, and, and the Kieran and a couple of others. Yeah, definitely. There's uh, lots of support, lots of volunteers, lots of people doing the right thing. But I will say this, uh, it, it, what, what's going to happen in the weekend will be great entertainment, uh, great for anybody involved in football, go out and enjoy it. The weather's going to be fantastic. But it is a product of all the hard work of people like Mick and, all, and the DDSL and all the volunteers in the league. All the people in the league are going to be being stewards, they're going to mm. carry the water, they're going to cut the sandwiches, and it, it is a reflection of the energy and effort of all those people. Yeah, you'll know things aren't going well when they don't answer the call by Munich and I. <laughs> they, they don't feel it's worth their while coming over. Well, I think what we're really looking forward to actually is seeing the standard of these teams, yeah. because going back to what we were talking about earlier, there is an emerging talent programme which has been in existence now for four or five years yeah. with the FBI and around uh, the, the, the country, and we, ha- we have it at under 11s, 12s, 13s and 14s, and effectively when the under 11s come in, we would uh, go through the process of having maybe 200 to 300 kids in, and they're looked at on, on, a, on a regular basis. The coaches must go out to some of the games, and then obviously it'll be it'll be down to forty, and and obviously then the, it, it goes lower then. But it'll be very interesting just to see the standard of the DDSL and see how good Man United or Bayern Munich, Ajax, Liverpool, and so forth, and see <laughs> where how far we are yeah. close to them or not. You know, no pressure on the young lads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think just one point I've made, made if I could. Uh, in the words of the competing teams, they say that this is going to be the best standard of competition in Europe this year. So for oh. all the people who are around Dublin or who would travel up, this is an opportunity to see the best competition, uh, the best standard of team available in one weekend. So we'd encourage people mm. to, to, to support us. And also it would be a great opportunity for people to actually see the campus. I yeah, don't know, yeah. you, you've been out there. Yes, it's it's not just for soccer. There's 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 Gaelic football. There's the the athletics. There's the the swimming. It's absolutely fantastic. fantastic. And I know Kieran had brought over a couple of the, the, the representatives from some of these clubs to see the standard. And yes. I think it was Chelsea that actually Chelsea said to you mm. that. Uh, you know, this is this is fantastic, and they're still building going on. Yeah. So, like in time, this is yeah. going to be fantastic. Fantastic. We're starting to do things right. Uh, very best to look at it. Well done. I would love to get you back in again over the next couple of months and chat a bit more about the changes to the underage structure and what it means for Irish football. But the Dublin District School Boys League, the Lifestyle Sports Friendship Cup taking place this weekend. FAI headquarters, Abbottstown, just off Blanchardstown. Uh, you can get your tickets. It's only a fiver a day, so get out there and support and all the a, lads. A family ticket, uh, thirty-five for two adults, two kids for the for the full weekend. Ah, so it's well. We know, we know who the salesman is here. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we should thank all our sponsors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we want to thank Lifestyle. We want to thank uh, specifically our, our, our lingus who've been tremendous to us, our own O'Neills who are supporting us, uh, who throughout. The, but we need to say thank you to those people because yeah. without that support, we wouldn't be able to put this event on. And thank so you to the evening. Your personal to the evening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, lads. Best of luck with us. Thank you. Hey, hope you enjoyed that latest offering from Off the Ball. If you want to subscribe, and you should, check out just up here. All our latest stuff is just down here. Generally, knock yourself out.